morning, everyone. Welcome to Lighthouse Messianic Fellowship. Two younger fellows and two middle-aged folks will now blow the show far and bring the service in. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We appreciate that so much. Bless God, the blessed one. Bless God, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected us from all the peoples, who gave us his Torah and sent his prophets and sent the Messiah. Blessed are you, God, giver of the Torah. Amen. amen, amen. All right, guys, today's Torah portion is Rehe. We're going to start in Deuteronomy at 11, 26 through 16 and 17. Behold, I said before you today, a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go to possess that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of the Jordan toward the setting sun? In the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the plains opposite of Gilgal, beside the terebinth tree of Morah, for you will cross over the Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you, and you will possess it and dwell in it. You shall be careful to observe all the statutes and judgments which I set before you today. Chapter 12. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Lord your God your Father is giving you to possess. All the days that you live on the earth, you shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. And you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and burn their wooden images with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of the gods and destroy their names from the place. You shall not worship the Lord your God with such things, but you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place, and there you shall go. There you shall take your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, and your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your freewill offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God. You shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hand, you and your household in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not at all do as we are doing here today. Every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For as yet you have not come to the rest and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around about, so that you dwell in safety, then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and your heave offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites who is within your gates." Since he has no portion nor inheritance with you, take heed to yourselves that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see. But in the place which the Lord chooses in one of your tribes, there you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command you. However, you may slaughter and eat meat with all, within all your gates, whatever your hearts desire, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. The unclean and clean may eat of it. Of the gazelle and of the deer alike, only you shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain or your new wine or your oil or the firstborn of your herd or your flock or any of your offerings which you vow of your free will offering or of the heave offering of your hand. But you must eat them before the Lord your God in, in the place which the Lord your God chooses, you and your sons and your daughters, your male servants and your female servants, and the Levite who is within your gates. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all to which you put your hand. Take heed to yourself that you do not forsake the Levites as long as you live in the land. When the Lord your God enlarges your border as he has promised you, and you say, let me eat meat because you no longer eat meat, you may eat as much as your 
heart's desire. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put His name is too far from you, then you may slaughter from your herds and from your flock, which the Lord your God has given you, just as I have commanded you, and you may eat within your gates as much as your heart desires. Just as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, so you may eat them. The unclean and clean may alike may eat them. Only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life. You may not eat the life within the meat. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You shall not eat it, that it may go well with you and your children after you. When you do what is right in the sight of the Lord, only the holy things which you have, you have vowed offerings. You shall take and go to the place which the Lord chooses." And you shall offer your burnt offering, the meat and the blood on the altar of the Lord your God. And the blood of your sacrifice shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall eat the meat. Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. When the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land." Take heed to yourselves that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abomination to the Lord which he hates, they have done to their gods, for they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to to it, nor take away from it. Chapter 13. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice. You shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is as your own soul secretly entices you, saying, Let's, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers are the gods of the people which are all around you, near to you or far off from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him or listen to him. Nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him. But you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death. And afterwards the hands of all the people. And you shall stone him with stones until he dies, because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So all Israel shall hear and fear and, do, and not again do such wickedness as this among you. If you hear someone in one of your cities in which the Lord your God gives you to dwell in, saying, Corrupt men have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Then you shall inquire, search out, and ask diligently. And if it is indeed true and certain that there are such abominations committed among you, you shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it, all that is in it, and its livestock with the edge of the sword." And you shall gather all his plunder in the middle of the street and completely burn them with fire the city and all his plunder. For the Lord your God, it shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. And none of, and none of the accursed things shall remain in your hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy, have compassion on you and multiply you just as he swore to your fathers. Because you have listened to the voice of the Lord your God to keep all his commands which I commanded you today, to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord your God. You, chapter 14, you are the children of God, of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor shave the front of your head for the dead, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. You shall not any detestable thing. These are the animals which you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, 
the deer, the gazelle, the roe deer, the wild goat, the mountain goat, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. And you may eat every animal with cloven hooves, having the hoof split into two parts that chew the cud among the animals. Nevertheless, of those that chew the cud or have cloven hooves, you shall not eat such as these, the camel, the hare, and the rock hyrax. For they chew the cud, but do not have cloven hooves. They are unclean for you. Also the swine is unclean for you, because it has cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud. You shall not eat the flesh, nor touch their dead carcasses. These you may eat of all that are in the water. You may eat all that have fins and scales. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It is unclean for you. All clean birds you may eat, but these you shall not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the red kite, the falcon, and the kite after their kind. Every raven after his kind, the ostrich, the short-eared owl, the seagull, and the hawk after their kind. The little owl, the screech owl, the white owl, the jackdaw, the carrion vulture, the fisher owl, the stork, the heron after his kind, the hoopy, and the bat. Also, every creeping thing that flies is unclean to you. They shall not be eaten. You may eat all the clean birds. You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the alien who is within your gates that the, he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. You shall surely tithe all the increase of your grain and the field produced year by year. And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine, your oil and your firstborn of your herds and your flocks. That you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. But if the journey is too long for you so that you are not able to carry the tithe or the place where you the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you. When the Lord your God has blessed you, I've lost my place here. Then you shall exchange it to the money and take the money in your land and your hand and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses. And you shall spend all that money for whatever your heart desires, for oxen or sheep or wine or similar drink. For whatever your heart desires, you shall eat there before the Lord your God and you shall rejoice. You and your household, you shall not forsake the Levite who is within your gates, for he has no part nor inheritance with you. At the end of every third, third year, you shall bring out the tithe of your produce of that year and store it up within your gates. And the Levite, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates, may come and eat and be satisfied that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of, uh, in which you do. Chapter 15. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Or of a foreigner you may require it, but you shall give up your claim to what is owed by your brother, except when there may be no poor among you. For the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance." Only if you carefully obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe with care all these commandments which I command you today. For the Lord your God will bless you just as He promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of your gates in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brothers. But you shall open your hand wide to him willingly and lend him sufficient for his needs, whatever he needs. Beware, lest there be a wicked thought of your heart saying, This seven years and the year release is at hand, and your eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cry out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin among you, and you shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and to your needy in your, hand, in your land. If your brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and served you six years, then in the seventh year you shall let him go free from you. And when you send him away free from you, you shall not let him go away empty-handed. You shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your wine press. From what the Lord has blessed you with, you shall give to him. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. And if it happens that he says to you, I will not go away from you, because he loves you and your house since he prospers with you. 
Then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his ear to the door, and he shall be your servant forever. Also to your female servant you shall do likewise. It shall not seem hard to you when you send him away free from you, for he has been worth a double hired servant in serving you six years. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. All the firstborn males that come from your herd and your flocks, for, <coughs> flocks you shall sanctify to the Lord your God. You shall do no work with the firstborn of your herd, nor shear the firstborn of your flock. You and your household shall eat it before the Lord your God year by year in the place which the Lord chooses. But if there is a defect in it, and if it is lame or blind or has any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You may eat it within your gates. The unclean and the clean person alike may eat it as if it were a gazelle or a deer. Only you shall not eat its blood. You shall pour it on the ground like water. Chapter 16. Observe this month of Abib and keep the Passover of the Lord your God. In the month of Abib, the Lord your God brought you out of the land of Egypt by night. Therefore you shall sacrifice the Passover of the Lord your God from the flock and from the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to put his name. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread with it. It's that it the bread of affliction, for you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that you may remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt and all the days of your life. And no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territories for seven days, nor shall any of the meat which you sacrifice for the first day at twilight remain overnight until morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover within any of your gates which the Lord your God gives you. But at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide, there you shall sacrifice the Passover at twilight, at the going down of the sun at the time you came out of Egypt. And you shall roast and eat it in the place which the Lord your God chooses. And in the morning you shall turn and go to your tents. Six days shall eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day there shall be a sacred assembly to the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it. You shall count seven weeks for yourselves. Begin to count the seven weeks. From the time when you begin to put the sickle to the grain, then you shall keep the feast of weeks the Lord your God within your tribute, a free will offering from your hand, which you shall give as the Lord your God blesses you. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, and your male servants and your female servants, the Levite who is within your gates, and the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow who are among you at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide." And you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and that you shall be careful to observe these statutes. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days, when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press. And you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your sons and your daughters, your male servants and your female servants, and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow who are within your gates. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands so that you surely, you, that you surely rejoice. Three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you." Our writings and prophets, we will move to Job 25. Then Bildad, the Shuvite, and answered and said, Dominion and fear belong to him. He makes peace in his high place. Is there any number to his armies? Upon whom does his light not rise? How then can man be righteous before God? Or how can he be pure who is born of a woman? If even the moon does not shine and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less a man who is a maggot and a son of man who is a worm. Now that you just got to Job, we're going to move over to 1 Timothy 5. as mothers, younger women as sisters with all purity. Honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. Now she who is really a widow and left alone, trusting God, continues in supplication and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. And these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, 
and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number, and not unless she has been the wife of one man, well reported for good works. If she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work, but refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having commendation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some have already turned aside after Satan, and if any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them, and do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Let the elders who rule, rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment, but those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. Thank you, Charlie. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah truth and planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, God, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. All right, we got a few quick announcements. Real quick, real quick. You can give online at paypal.me forward slash lighthouse messianic. You get to the top of our announcements here. You can also give in the little black box that's on the sound booth back there uh, to, um, to put that on there. Also, we have the books from Carmen Imes for one more week if you want a book. You can mark it at 15 bucks a piece and grab your book before we send it. Oh, we're done? Oh, we send them back. Too late. You have to buy it from Amazon. Sorry. Um, okay. Every week we need your help. Every week the church provides a place for us to corporate worship and spiritual growth and the meal for the table fellowship and community growth. We all benefit from these things uh, that God has blessed us with, and we are all in need to have some part in making sure it's cared for properly. Midrash starts at 2 each week, and the Parkview crew leaves at the same time. Many people are going straight to those while a few of us are cleaning up after, after all of it's done. At about 1.45, if everyone would contribute to cleaning it up, it would take us about 15 minutes or so. Even my phone is jumping today. Have mercy, just like the iPad. <laughs> uh, but if you'd help us clean up about two, at 1.45, uh, we did buy another mop. So I think Caleb was mopping with one mop last week, and no one else could help. Well, Pat couldn't fix that problem. She bought another mop. So if you feel like mopping is up your alley, please, by all means, do that. That would be wonderful. Uh, let's see. It takes about 15 minutes to clean up if all of us join in. It doesn't take long, especially this time because we've made sandwiches. We don't have a bunch of spoons and everything else to wash. It's easy. Uh, Midrash, every, every Sabbath from 2 to 4. If you have any questions about the Bible, what it says, what it means, how it applies to your life, uh, we'd love to discuss those with you. Today, the Haftor is in Isaiah 54, 11 through 55 and 5 is what they'll be discussing if you get that far. Parkview Ministry leaves at 2 o'clock from here. Nate, which is down here at the front, leads that ministry. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you can touch base with Nate. If you'd like to come and serve once a month, twice a month, every, every day of the week, uh, that is great. We'd love to have you. Our Hebrew class is led by Bill Moore. Uh, after Midrash each week, you'll talk to him. If you're interested in joining, Bill will help you get through the alphabet, and you'll be reading Genesis 1-1 through uh, the end of the Bible in no time. Right, Bill? All right. Tuesday night. This week we'll be back in Micah. Uh, Matt was sick last week. We apologize about that. We all need to pray for him more that his health stays up so he can be here every Tuesday night. Uh, we'll do it in Micah chapter 4 and uh, join us at 6.30 here at the church. Grace Place. 
is uh, the fourth Monday of the month. It's August 28th this month. You can join us with others to help join the membership of other churches and serve people in the need for the bread for the body and the bread of life. You can show up at 11 to help serve, work in the clothing ministry in the back, or meet those in our community. You may need a, need a word of hope or life. Uh, there's also... You can help take table, you know, plates to tables and things like that, and you may have a chance to show the word there. Our questions and answers are always still afterwards, so if you think of something, have a question about something, you can do that. You can come and speak to, like, Layman's preaching today, so you can come and ask him anything you may have. We will do prayer, and then we do have sandwiches and salad and fruit and such in the back, so you can come back and join us. If you, as this is just something we like to do as table fellowship, to spend some time with one another and sit with someone you don't normally sit with. So if you normally sit with Nathan Hall, go sit with Paul Howard back over there. He's a new fellow that's joining us today. So um, right now, these cute people hiding over here in the corner behind the baptism are going to sing for us. All right, everyone stand and join us as we sing the Shema. <clears throat> Amen. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Our God, Yahweh, is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join us in prayer. Father, thank you again for bringing us to your Shabbat, where we could fellowship and just be united and want to worship and praise you, Father, and lift up your great name. Lord, we pray that these uh, songs that we're about to sing is a sweet incense to you. The message today, uh, just being able to hear your word out loud, Father, and our hearts just being uh, attentive to your wonderful word, Father, just may it all be a sweet instance to you. Father, we love you so much, and we just, uh, we give this all to you. Amen. Everybody, put your hands together. Amen. Let's sing it every phrase. Every phrase is to our God. Every word of worship with one eye.
praise belongs to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the glory and honor, God, you deserve it.
Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. They will be comforted. Blessed. Oh! 
God, we are your kingdom. May your word continue to guide us home, God. God. Amen. All right, we've got a special occasion this morning. special and, and joyful occasion that someone commits their heart to God, and um, I hope it never grows old to anyone, that when you see a baptism, that you see that someone gets to start over again, someone gets to um, have the promise of salvation, and um, so today we always allow people to, to tell why they want to be baptized, so I'm going to give Aaron, you can stand up so you don't 
put this mic inside that water, if you can speak to why you would like to be baptized and the commitment that you want to make. Uh, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I want to follow him all the days of my life. So this baptism, as many of you know, is a, a picture of someone dying and then having new life. And what we do here often whenever someone's baptized and they come up, we say together, new life, um, because that's what is um, being done. Um, so you can hold this. So we're going to baptize Aaron in the name of Yeshua or Jesus, and that is who cleanses him and gives him new life. So you can hold your nose. But. New life. If the kids will come on up for prayer. Hold up, hold up. I made a mistake. Father, we, just, we thank you so much of this blessing of children and, and the blessing of new life. And Father, we just we love you so much. And I, my heart is full of joy just to, to see that you make changes in our life and that you draw people who we love to you. And Father, we ask that each one of these children be drawn to your love and be drawn to serve you with their life and that you would protect them and that you would keep them safe. And um, Father, we ask that while they're um, in their rooms or there in here that they have hearts to hear and that you would uh, speak to each one of them. And Father, we just, we love you so much and we ask for each person here today would have open hearts to hear from you and that you would speak to each one of our hearts uh, through your word and that we would each be represent, a representative of you. And um, we also ask, Father, that, that you would just fill us with your love, that each one of us be so full of your love that, that when those anyone comes into this place, that they could feel your love here, and they could feel how you have filled us with that love. We just love you so much, and in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Yehovah <laughs> Marecha Yae Yehova Pana Velecha Vihuneka Yisa Yehova Pana Elecha Veyasem lecha Lecha Shalom May the Lord Yahweh bless you and keep you And may Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you And may Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace Amen
sometimes we almost forget how to do the little things like turn the mic on. How are y'all doing this morning? Everybody have a good week? Did anybody not have a good week? I'm the only one? Thank you, Debbie, for having misery with me. Actually, from the end of last Shabbat until Thursday, it's been pretty miserable. Uh, last Shabbat ended kind of bad for me spiritually. I felt like we left out of here in a disarray. And I pray that today we are back on fire as the body of Yeshua. I got sick the Sunday. I went down physically, which allowed me really time to spend with God because I couldn't sleep at night. So I spent my night time speaking with him a whole lot. In the midst of the week, a friend of mine called me that I met in Israel. He was inspirational in getting it able to, uh, our people could go to Israel and work on bomb shelters. He's 57 years old. Found out he was born with a heart defect, and they were going to open his heart up and remove some things and rearrange some things in his heart. His name is Bobby Stark. And he called me, and I don't know about y'all, but uh, I, I consider myself pretty tough. But if the day comes that they said, Well, we're going to have to cut you open, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a little antsy about that. A little bit more antsy than that, than knowing that one day I'm going to die. Well, as was Bobby. Just not comfortable with the fact that I'm fixing to be cut open. It's already been determined I'm going to the uh, surgeon, the specialist tomorrow, to tell me exactly what time they're going to put me under the blade. Let me know, will you please pray for me? I said, right now. And we went to prayer. And I asked the Lord, if it be your will, that he be healed without the knife. But if not, we still give you praise because we know that you're the great I am. The next day, next evening, he called me. And he said, the specialist said, we're not going to have to cut you. And I said, wow, you have an opportunity here. Then I received yesterday morning a message from Angie Newcomer. It said her husband, Ricky, was going under the knife. And I said, oh. I don't know if I can now share the glory of what was done in the prayer. But I, yes, I can. Because our God chooses different ways to do healings. He chooses many ways to do his work. Sometimes he speaks it done. Sometimes he does it through the hands of other people. Either way, he and he alone gets the glory. Both, to my knowledge, Bobby and Ricky are both doing good. I, 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 I text with Angie this morning. And I didn't know this was her anniversary. And I said, well, glory be to God. He fixed it where that you can have many more anniversaries together. God is still the very same God that he's always been. And I almost forgot something. Last week, I watched our young people stand up here and give testimony after testimony after testimony about how they experienced our God heal people. And boom, right into this week. I don't know about y'all, but I don't believe in coincidence. In everything that's laid out for me this week in the message, I don't believe in coincidence. Where we're at as a congregation, I don't believe is a coincidence. I believe that God is still God. He's still sitting on his throne and he desires you and I to recognize him, to declare him, to believe him, and to trust him. 
That's exactly what I believe. And that's what I believe that he wants from all of his people. The problem with is his people. It's always been his people. And it's so easy for us sometimes to point back at those other people. I can't believe they would do that. I can't believe they couldn't see that. I can't believe, I can't believe. And if they could rise up out of the grave today, they'd probably look at us and say, I can't believe y'all are doing that. And God says, just be mine. Just trust me. Let me be God and you be my people. That's too difficult. God, I want to share in the God stuff sometimes. I want to make the decisions. I want to be out front. Layman, just be layman and let God be God. Because I can promise you this, layman will mess it up 105% of the time. And if you don't know what 105%, some of it I'll mess up twice. There's a whole lot in this portion. I'm going to share some of it with you, but I'm going to share with you where it, where it led me this week. As I struggled through the week physically, hopefully strengthened spiritually. You heard all of it, but I'm going to read some of it to you again. It starts out in verse 26 of chapter 11. It says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. As a human being that knows everything, I should say, I don't have to read any further. That's all I want. That's all I want is the blessings. Who wants the curses? Hey, y'all are human beings too. But God being God said, and the curse. If you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you to go after other, other gods which you have not known. This book of Deuteronomy, it's a book of relationship. I believe that, you know, that we come in, we have the, the, the history of creation, the calling of a father Abraham, the, his son Isaac and his son Jacob, the, the birth of a nation, going into the, the bondage of the Egyptians, uh, uh, Exodus, the, the, the bringing them out of bondage, Leviticus, wonderful Leviticus, all the details that we have to memorize so we can walk exactly how he tells us to do. But then before going into the promised land, Moses brings the people and he, he brings them the book we call Deuteronomy. And he says, this is how I interpret it. Children of God, this is how you have relationship with him relationship with him. His instructions for you and I to know how to walk before him. How many of you in your marriage did something that your spouse got very aggravated at you? Let me finish the question, Tommy. <laughs> you did something, but you did not know that they did not like that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Of course, my wife will say, well, after 40 years, you should have figured that one out. And I know sometimes that we, we mess up before God. I'm 61 years old, and still sometimes as I go through the scripture, I go, oh, man, I didn't know that. I didn't, how, how do I do this, God, that I can, I can walk this walk, I can talk this talk in a manner that I don't offend you? Because I can tell you this, I'm an offensive person. I'm a loud person. Last week, I think Nate, uh, Matt called me the, the shouting preacher. <laughs> I didn't hear her. So I'm going to try to shout with a whisper. But I get excited. I can remember Debbie Smith not, not really liking me or not liking me at all because I was yelling at the kids on the baseball field. That's the meanest coach I ever saw in my life. 
But I'm sometimes offensive to people. And sometimes I'm offensive to God's people. And when I'm offensive to God's people, this book right here tells me that I'm offensive to God. And so I have to, I have to learn how not to be events offensive. And sometimes I'm offensive that I didn't know that I was being offensive like that. And throughout all of this, and I heard it last weekend as we were having our, our meeting, so many times I hear people say things like, hey, no, you don't have to worry. God has this. You ever heard that? Huh, God's in control. Let go and let God. Right? But you know what? That's all true. But sometimes, all the time, I think, when God's in control, Nathan, he wants us to know our part. What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to just walk around like zombies? God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. Or has he called us how to do our part? It's very important, I think, for us to understand our part. We didn't receive salvation just to stand here and be nothing. He has something for us to do. And I've seen it over and over and over with other people and myself of letting self get in the way of being obedient. Did y'all hear the word obey today in the Torah reading? Anybody hear that? A time or two? A blessing if you will obey. A curse if you do not obey. Does it mean that we have to obey everything? How? Does it mean that if I do everything correctly according to the word, that everything will be wonderful in my life? Nothing ever unpleasant, nothing unpleasant will ever come into my life if I do everything perfectly according to the word of God. Well, I know, I know, I know. We can't do it all perfect, can we? But, it, but if we could, what if I don't start Shabbat at the right time? Oh my gosh. You know what? I've been doing this since 2008. And man, I don't know what the right time to start Shabbat is. And I, don't, I can't be that quick to tell you how many Shabbats there have been from 2008 until now. Probably 105% wrong time. I tried to get that one time. I talked to a lady in Israel to ask her, what's the right time to start Shabbat? It's not for you. What? That's ours. You leave it alone. I said, no, 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 no. I, 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 that, that can't be the right answer. She said, okay, 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 okay. The right time to start Shabbat is when you can see the moon. I said, what if it's cloudy? It's ours. <laughs> so I didn't get an answer. So I do the best that I can as, as I'm working this out. I do not think that we're going to be cursed because we didn't start Shabbat at 6.02 in 13 seconds. Chapter 12 in this book, I've titled to me The Instructions of Intolerance. If you didn't read it this week, you did hear it today if you were paying attention as Will read it. The, the chapter on the instructions of intolerance. God gives us, you shall not do these things. Do not, do not, do not. He didn't say, oh, it's okay. The Tuckers do it. The Hintons do it so everybody else can do it. He said, no, these things you shall not do. In verse 4, he says, You shall not worship the Lord your God with such things. Now here's where I think we get in trouble. Not that we're trying to worship God with such things, but that we bite each other so hard over this issue. 
Y'all have all read and, and read and read the same thing that I read. I'm not a thousand percent positively sure exactly what all these such things are. We, and we're, and we're, we're 2,000 years thereabouts removed from the time Yeshua walked the face of this earth and things have come in from every direction. Translations are a little bit different. How do we know for sure exactly what these things are? And is it worth hurting a brother or sister because they're doing something different than what you and I think they should be doing. How many of you have changed the way you live your life within the last year, within the last five years, within the last 10 years? And, and, and as we move on, I pray we're saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for opening my eyes more than they were open before. And some of those times I've done that and I've come back and said, wow, I wasn't even seeing clearly on that. Because you know, the enemy is a wonderful deceiver. He, he can present himself as an angel of light. And when we think of light in the scripture, we think of truth, don't we? It must be, but he can come in and he doesn't have to be that slick. You know, some 6,000 years ago when he was talking to Eve, and he said, is that really what God said? Here, Adam, eat. He hasn't had to change his tactics at all. And yet, we're still ready to sink our teeth just like Adam was. I was riding with a co-worker. I saw my uncle in a restaurant this week. He was my hero growing up as a child. And uh, he got to talking about my family. I said, he's really not my uncle by blood. I was my stepmom was his sister. Your stepmom? I didn't, I didn't know you had a stepmom. You never, you never say anything about her. I said, well, she divorced me over Christmas, over the name Yeshua. And he said, man, there seems to be so many arguments about Christmas and, and Easter and all kinds of things. And he, he's a new believer, y'all, and he, he has some struggles. He said, just let me be frank with you. He said, isn't the most important thing of all to believe that Jesus is the King of Kings? And to accept him as our Savior? I said, yes. That's the most important thing of all. I, I, I know Matt said something about this in his message a couple weeks ago. But we can have the perfect zitzits. We can eat perfectly kosher. We can start Sabbath at the perfect time. But if we don't have Yeshua Jesus, we're not doing anything but going through the motion. And I'm going to tell you, it's easy to get into a flow of just going through the motion. And that's death. That is death. It's imperative as believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that we give everything to him before all of the other stuff. Because if we don't, all the other stuff means nothing. And I'm even going to say all the other stuff will lead us away from him if we leave him out in the beginning. In Deuteronomy 13, I know you've already heard it, but I want to read it again. The first five verses. Please turn in your Bibles if you have them. Or turn in your phone. This is, this is where it got real to me this week. 
I'll read the verses and then share with you. It says, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass of what he spoke to you, saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But if that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, but that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk, you shall put away the evil from your midst. I now want to give you the scenario. I have giant computer screens at my desk so I can multitask, no, so I can actually see the print but I have a big screen in front of me that I, I watch videos on. I'm reading the portion. I've got it open. I'm at this point. I have my big screen in front of me and the chosen. I, I began season three of the chosen. And I'm actually at season three Episode 3. It's playing. I'm reading these verses that I just read to you. I'm hearing what's being said. Now, I pause it. Because in my mind, what's happening on The Chosen and what I have just read connected in my mind of what I know about the Scriptures. So, I went into my Bible and I turned to Luke chapter 4. If you turn in your phone. And this is what was happening on the chosen. Luke chapter 4, 16 through 30. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was great famine throughout the land. But none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. 
So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. I was very, very moved because I don't take it as a coincidence. That's where I was reading in the Torah portion. Because in the, in the movie, the rabbi told Yeshua, he said, if you do not denounce your words, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. Remember what the law just said. And in the movie, he said, I am the law of Moses. I think I've talked with Matt about this before, and some people have gotten upset over that, but I believe Yeshua Jesus is the law of Moses completely. But in that moment at my desk, I wasn't seeing some actor who's done whatever he's done. I put my head down on my desk and I began to weep. Everything that's gone on in my life, I've, been, I've allowed myself to be moved away from really, really staying focused on who my king is. Not who he was, who he is. It, it came on, uh, uh, now I watched another episode, and we're all familiar with it, and I'm not wanting to mess anybody up, but I can tell you, it's, if you haven't seen it, it's, it goes along pretty close to this, so I'm not a spoiler for anything. But there was this lady in the movie, and she had an issue of blood for 12 years. Y'all familiar with that? And, and, and she just knew she had heard about this one called the Messiah who he was healing people. And she, she had faith. The Bible tells us the, for the faith she had. If I can only but touch the hem of his garment. That's all I need to do. And in this show, the camera zoomed in to a blue and white tassel and her hand touching that tassel. How many of y'all have seen that already? Oh, I'm, I, don't, I don't, it moved me. It literally moved me. <coughs> I don't know why, but it did. And I'm, uh, another part, where he sends them out two by two, you're going to go out and you're going to do these things. And, and I think that still applies to us today. But, you know, in the movie they went, not us? How can we do this? And, and it depicts it. Anybody have any pictures of, of the real time when they did that in your wallet? Of what they looked like when they went out two by two? Nobody? Bill? <laughs> Excuse me again while you look for your pictures. I say that because somebody said, well, you don't know that's what they look like. No. But I want to tell you what I saw. Two by two by two as they went out to the lame and to the deaf and to the blind and to the mute. The expression they captured in this video of these guys who were chosen by Jesus to go out to do his will the joy that was on their faces as the glory of God was manifest to the people through them. They were allowed to be a part of it. And I came back to me. And I remembered when I got saved how God gave me a love for people. And I wanted to go everywhere and share that love with people. And as I was there at my desk with my head down, 
God said, Laman, you've lost this love. You've lost this desire. And I said, yeah, but God, they did it. Your people have been so harsh. Your people have hated so deep. Your people have hurt me and my wife so bad. He said, were you doing it for them or are you doing it for me? I said, oh God, I've lost my way. God, restore in me what you put in me in the day that I said yes. Because I've allowed, I've allowed things to distort me. I've allowed. Then I go to lunch with my brothers yesterday. Nate and Matt. And Matt said, I got to tell you something. You weren't there, but I had to say it anyway. I called you out in my message, and I had to repent because of, because of, because of. And I just kind of shrugged it off, Matt. I apologized, but I had to be tough. So I decided, what did he really say? So I turned on the video. I know you're not supposed to watch videos while you're driving. It's really not good to watch videos while you're driving when you're crying uncontrollably. But see, I didn't see that part that Matt said until this week when I'd already had that moment with God and it all just came right down and I said God restore me and I want restoration and I can't just declare it with my mouth man I I can't just say hurt be gone I've tried that many times But I want to be filled with the love for God's people and for all those that God wants to be his people. I want to be that person. And I think we're coming into a time of season where a bunch of us are going to have the opportunity to receive healings even of this type. If you've been hurt by somebody, if you've been hurt by a lot of people, If you have a maimed arm or a weak heart, he can sure heal your arm and your heart. Weak eyes and no hearing, he can do that. How many of us believe he can raise the dead? Why in the world is it so hard for me to believe that he can take my hurt? I don't know. I don't have the answer for that if you have the answer. If he's of Holy Spirit's given it to you, please share it. Many people today and for the past, for many years, have had much, much difficulty understanding God's feast. We're still learning as we go. I know I am. Uh, every single time we come up to Passover or or or, or Pentecost or something, and Matt or, or Nathan say, "Hey, who wants to take this?" I, I feel so undeservable to take it. I said, "Because there's still so much I need to learn about this." I found out last weekend there's so much we need to learn about this, even this feast called Sukkot. Matt, Nathan, will y'all, will y'all come on? If you look at, uh, in that verse, Deuteronomy chapter 12, there's three times when he's given us instructions. Three times he says, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Now, I know I reach out and get stuff and say, wow, did he mean that? Did it, did it say rejoice three times because there's three pastors in, in this church? 
What is, is that three representative that we're supposed to stand up here together rejoicing in the Lord and sharing that rejoicing to you? I didn't count until uh, today when Will was reading. But my wife, she read the, the Torah portion uh, before I did this week and early she had me sent the, send this to the guys. And on De Deuteronomy 16, 15, it says, seven days you shall keep a sacred feast of the Lord your God in the place which the Lord your chooses, in the place which the Lord your chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all of your produce and all of the work with all of your hands so that you shall surely rejoice. And I said, wow, there it is again. I didn't catch that earlier in the week. So when I backed up and as he's giving us the instructions of Feast of Tabernacles, guess how many times the word rejoice is right there in Deuteronomy 16? Yes, right, three. So we met yesterday as the pastors of this church and we, we realize that there needs to be some changes in how we do things and how we do things. But whatever we're doing, we need to rejoice in the Lord. Sukkot is about him. It's not about me having a good time. Fortunately, he, he allows that to be because he's such a good God. He read in there, remember, remember when I brought you out. Oh, Maybe that's what he wants us to do at Sukkot. To have a whole week long celebration remembering when he brought us out of captivity. And every single one of us have been slaves to sin until Jesus Christ redeemed us. And he gives us a week to celebrate that. And so I'm just wondering... I've been wondering, I've been asking him, have we possibly done something to err, to look off, to, instead of keeping our eyes focused on him? And so things have happened that have happened, and the three of us come to the decision, that this is where we're going to do tabernacles. This is where the body's going to meet, and we're going to celebrate. And we're going to celebrate with each other. We're going to celebrate as a family. And do things. I'm not going to be able to participate in everything you participate in. You're not going to be able to participate in everything I participate. You know why? It's only a week. You want to say anything? I think <laughs> um, that I, we had asked everyone to pray and fast this week. Um, just to search to hear from God. And that's one thing. We were looking at where to have tabernacles, and I, I know Matt had prayed and fasted, you know, a few weeks before, and he he had uh, where we had believed we should be, and I don't know if I was as diligent during that time to to pray and fast during that time that that he was, and I really uh, you know ashamed of that that I, I didn't do what he had done, but this week when we were praying, I really have kind of held on to. Uh, Kemp Joke is something I loved going to, and you know, just I, I know my kids love going to it. So we we some of y'all don't know we were looking where we celebrate this week long feast. If we're going to have it at this camp or have it here or at the parks and places like that. And uh, we had kind of discussed some things last week. This week when I was going along, God really just like put it on my heart that he he knows what's best for us, and and he has already gone way in front of us to understand what even our congregation needs. And, um, and during this time, each one of us are going through some pretty large changes in our life. Matt is just now retired from the military. Layman, he, uh, the, the, his, the company that he had, or the building that he manages is being given to a university, and he finds out at the end of this month um, where, if they're going to retain him or not. At the end of this month, he finds that out. Um, so most likely both of them are going to be in new, new jobs by the time that Sukkot comes. I personally have two kids under two, and um, I, and probably the very hardest week of my job I've ever had was this week. Um, and it, it doesn't look like it'll stop for a little while. So 
in this, I, I look at this time of Sukkot, and God is like, hey, I, I know what y'all need to do when it's time to have Sukkot. And I know that y'all can't do all what you usually do every year, and that I, I'm going before you. Even that something that you might want to do is to be out at this big camp with lots of people. Um, but I, it really, I had great peace in that and that this we should have it here and have it in the park and there's some things that we've kind of talked about I think that would be really good the specifics aren't there but the church that we also worship with here they're struggling pretty uh, hard they, they worship on Sundays and Wednesdays we worship on Tuesdays and Saturdays well God really has kind of put it on our heart that this be a time that we could celebrate with them that would encourage them in a great way during that week and one of the things God calls us to do during that time is to bring your tithes to help the poor and the needy. And a lot of times we don't do that during that time. And that this be a chance for us to be able to do that too, where we could help out at a nursing home or to um, have times that we serve others during this week as well. And that was something that's been very encouraging to me too, too that, that during this time of Sukkot, that it won't be just about us building with each other, that we might get a chance to serve with others as well. And so that... We will, over the next few weeks, we'll discuss how that might look, and we'll have a, a schedule in place uh, for Sukkot. But um, I, one, I, I would apologize that myself wasn't, wasn't to be where, where he w- was, or maybe even where Layman was, um, whenever we first talked on this. And, um, but God has, has shown me a bunch in this past week, and um, I, I look forward to a, a, good, a good Sukkot. Yeah, I think they said um, they said a good bit. I, I would just add that I think, you know, last week we had a meeting that was supposed to be informational that turned into something that it, it went a direction we didn't intend for it to go, and we let it go there. And so, I, I think the best question of the of the week last week was from Madeline Salter, who said, um, "Well, we have three pastors, so w- what do they think?" And I think that hit us hard as far as you know, what we're supposed to be doing and what we're supposed to be hearing. And and so I think um, we were looking at things from a very physical standpoint and just that shift to really say, uh, to look at things from a spiritual standpoint, to say, one, well, I, I think there are things to learn. I think uh, I think we're in the time of repentance right now. And I think there's a lot of that needed from everybody. Uh, not to point fingers, but to, that we should all be pointing our finger here and saying, what do I have to get out of my life? What, what do I have to, to cleanse of myself? And, um, you know, it's easy to look at the faults of others. I think Layman said that a lot this morning. It's easy to look at others and say, well, this is what they're not doing. It's much harder to say, to look at yourself and say, this is where I really need to clean up. This is where I really need to go before God. One question I was going to ask, every day at, at every meal during Camp Yeshua, I asked a question, a Bible question, and um, I came home sick, and I, I told the director, I think it might have been because I, I high-fived everybody in the camp four times a day, and uh, I, still, I still would go back and do it. It was worth it. Um, but I asked questions like, what's your favorite prophet in the Bible? What's your favorite, you know, uh, book of the Bible, what's your favorite miracle of Jesus? And it really got the kids engaged, teens engaged in, in the Bible and talking about it. And I wanted to ask one question, and I was told it was a little too hard, and I shouldn't uh, put something so heavy. But I'll ask you, because I can ask you all that, that I would just look. I mentioned last, last week or the week before, the fruit of the Spirit. I would just look at those, I think it's seven things, eight things, and say, what does God need to work on me most in those? Because it's a package deal. It's a single fruit with eight different components. And if we're lacking in one, we're lacking in all. And so I would say, that's my encouragement to you. It's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to look and say, God, what, what do I need your help in, in in fixing some part of the fruit of the Spirit in me that's not evident? How are people viewing me, and, and how are people, do they, when, when I speak and when I act, do people see the fullness of the fruit of the Spirit? So that would be my encouragement. I'm excited. I think um, 
you know, my pride, I wanted to be at Camp Chioka. And, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I let go of that. Um, but I'm actually even more excited to see how that's going to look here after we talked yesterday. We all came together in one accord. We all had sought God all week and came to the same conclusion that God was telling us this is where we need to be. And I'm really excited to see what that looks like as far as the joy that will be here and the difference uh, that can be seen through that. So uh, love every one of y'all and uh, looking forward to a, a great season. We will have details later on how it will be. Uh, we're going to conclude today a little bit different. I think Lawrence and his team's going to come back up. If somebody wake Lawrence up. Oh, oh, come on, come on up, Lawrence. Uh, yes, we, we, it, it won't. Sooner than later, it will be uh, because it, it, everything's different, but everything's the same. So, uh, I think we all have some ideas. And, and give us your ideas, and we might use them, we might not. So uh, uh, I don't know. They're, they're going to lead us in, in praise, worship, but this is also the time. If you need prayer, if you want prayer, if you want to pray for one of us, I can guarantee you we need it too. If you want to go across the room and sit down beside somebody and pray with them. You see, so I don't even know you, but I just want to come pray that God gives you a blessing. Now, now's the time we're setting aside for that.